so we got an opportunity to meet with him out at the combine and then got an opportunity to meet with him here uh, when he came down. Um, you know, obviously football is very important to him. Uh, I'd say he's very much a team-oriented guy. Um, and, uh, you know, we had, we had a lot of good conversations about his motivation and, um, you know, really looking forward to working with him this weekend. And, um, you know, hopefully we can continue to carry a lot of good conversations over the years with him. What stood out on tape watching him? Jeff? Speed. Um, you know, he was able to pursue and get to the ball very well. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of those things even showed up in special teams with him. Um, so he was always like on kickoff. He was the first guy down the field. Um, and then his ability to basically chase down sideline to sideline. Um, so there's a, lot, there's a lot of things to work with. Um, you know, we're excited to have him. Uh, there's always going to be a progression of, you know, we're going to ask him to do multiple things. You have to understand, like, when, when those guys come in, um, there's always short-term goals and long-term goals. So, and I would say we've seen that, like, with Christian, Jalen, uh, Javon, and those guys are all high-round picks. Um, so you always ask them to do a lot of things early in their first year, knowing that the progression is going to be maybe down the road. But then you kind of find a niche of things that they could do for you right now, and that's kind of the hope uh, with Channing moving forward. So, and, uh, yeah. I had one other quick thing for you, just more as a philosophical question, without obviously going into any details. How much yeah, so yeah, far yeah, this offseason, yeah. maybe just when you're alone thinking, do you think to yourself, how many new wrinkles do I want to add so we're not predictable? What we did last year, we did really well. When we were at our best, especially in that winning streak. A lot of good schemes, a lot of good ideas. Do you think much about, do, do I want to add a couple wrinkles? Do I want to add a, a lot so people can't judge us off last year's save? How much in a private, quiet moment do you think about that stuff? A lot, a <laughs> lot. I, I would say it's, it's uh, nonstop. And I think even the things that we do and we've done consistently, you're always trying to tweak and you know, do it better. Or if there's adjustments that you can make, um, and then I think you know the big thing is when you're when you when you're installing, you always look for a logical teaching progression. So um, you know things may present and look a little bit different to the offense, but there's a lot of our guys doing the same things. Um, so I think those 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 thoughts are constant. And then there's always variables that go into that of you know what what teams are doing to you and what you're looking to do to teams. Uh, in that situation and right now really the focus is on us our techniques our fundamentals um, you know been really excited our, our, our guys are working um, you know our assistant coaches all, all these guys are, are doing a great job with our guys and uh, I really feel like you know we're making some progress um, and then I think it, you know it's like always I think at our core there will be foundational things that we do um, but I think there will always be a game plan element uh, going in from week to week. Okay. Retaining Ogba, uh, first, how excited were you when you found uh, that out and that developed and uh, just how key he is uh, to this defense function? First and foremost, you know, I was, I was glad uh, that he was back. He, he's a tremendous human being um, and he's a very good football player, which, which obviously helps us. Um, you know, I, I think uh, he gives us some versatility because he can do multiple things and um, you know, we're obviously excited to have him back. He's a, he's a good worker. He's good for some of our young guys, um, you know, and there's things that he knows and he understands through his experience of playing that, you know, he can tell guys that, you know, he helps bring them along and then he understands the system and the process. So all positive uh, with him being back. How, how much further ahead can you be and how would it manifest itself considering you have everybody back from last year? Yeah. 11 starters back, most of the backups. Um, so again, what, what, how much further ahead can you, can you be at this point, and how can that help down the line? Yeah, and I mean, we've, you know, as a staff, we feel like we're making progress and we feel like we are further ahead. Um, you know, now the most important thing is that translates to wins on Sunday, you know, when we start in September. And obviously, we got a long process to go through before we get there. Um, but there's a lot of things that we've, you know, identified that, okay, let's focus, let's work on this, let's get this better. Uh, there's things with certain players that we've focused on saying, hey, you know, we need to get this better or we're really expecting this guy to be able to do this. And, you know, all of our, I would say, phase one 
our voluntary veteran mini camp that we had, um, our phase two, which is ending tomorrow, and then we'll start with OTAs on Monday. All of that has had all those things in mind, and you know we, we feel like we are making progress. We feel like we should be better, um, you know. But obviously, we got to go out and produce. Josh, How much easier does that make your job as DC having pretty much everybody back? Easier. Um, it puts you at a different starting point. Um, that there's some familiarity. I guess there's some things that you know. Um, with our guys having familiarity of you know how we certain checks that we get in and out of um, that obviously helps us um, that you're not spending time on something's a brand new concept some of it's there's recall uh, again that gives you the ability to do some very similar things but tweak it a little bit here or there to improve it um, so I, I think it gives you some advantages and the, the, probably the biggest advantage is just the communication between the players and not only do they know the guy that's next to them, they know how they play and they know things that they, they need to know and which our communication, our attendance, all that stuff has been great here in the offseason. Josh, um, I remember when we spoke to you a couple of months ago, you said that um, like the framework of the defense would be similar, this most, mostly the same, but you kind of look at things from the back, you know, down, like the defense mm -hmm. first. To me, that sounds like maybe you'd ask, you know, guys like Javon and Brandon Jones and X to do more, but I'm, I'm wondering, like, philosophically, is there any more that you can ask them to do? Because it feels like last year they, they did just about everything. Well, I, I yeah, I, th I think w we ask all of our guys to be multiple, and sometimes it's easier for guys that are in space when you see them to do multiple things than it is, uh, say, a guy like Christian Wilkins, who, you know, like if his technique changes from inside to head up to outside, um, you know, that might be a little bit more difficult to see. Um, you know, I think a lot of it is just, you know, like you're how you for each individual coach, I think everything's a little bit different. So for me, from seeing things from the back end down is, well, I started in the secondary. I've pretty much been in the secondary my whole career. And then, you know, from just years of seeing the game from, you know, from wide down to, you know, to the tight, I think that's kind of, you know, really what I've kind of meant by that is, you know, I, I really do. I see it from the back end down. Um, doesn't mean that we don't build or do multiple things with the guys in the front. Um, I would say we'll continue to ask guys to be multiple. I think it makes you versatile as a defense, um, you know, and then again, you're always trying to highlight, um, I would say, the techniques that your players do well which is why we have guys that are role players that we feel very good about. We try to keep them in certain roles and try to get the most of them that, that way to put them in the best position to succeed, if that makes sense. Yeah, Jalen, Jalen Phillips said that he's been trying to slim down this offseason. Is that something that came from the coaching staff that you guys wanted from him, or is he doing that on his own, and how uh, can it help him? Well, there's always a conversation, um, you know, with our strength staff, uh, nutritionists, uh, you know, our players, things that we're asking them to do. And it really starts with overall health, uh, more so than like, hey, you know, we need you to lose five or 10 pounds to do this, or we need you to gain 20 pounds. Like, it's not advantageous to ask somebody to lose, you know, five pounds and not be able to hold an edge, you know, but obviously, um, you know, running better, feeling better. Uh, I think all those things. Um, and like I said, uh, you know, when, when, and I think it was, uh, Barry that asked me earlier about uh, Channing, you know, like there's a lot of things, you know, when, when, when guys first come in that are just totally different to them. And I think Jalen is a guy that wants to be great and wants to do everything perfect. And I think he's finding that happy balance of work, failure, you know, to, to bring the best out of himself. So I think, you know, a couple pounds here or there, not really gonna it's more nutrition based than it is football or playing based speaking of Jalen how, how big of a difference have you noticed in him and Javon Holland this offseason program compared to this time last year when they were just coming into the NFL I'm gonna guess their heads were swimming uh, I would say it's a noticeable difference for both of them I, I think the things that they're doing athletically on the field I think the communication that they're doing out on the field I think they have a better grasp of the defense I think they have a better grasp of what we're asking them to do uh, I think they're they're performing at a high level. 
I think they're training at a high level, and I think they're recovering at a high level. I think they understand, you know, the all-encompassing of really their health, whether their mental, physical, and emotional health is the most important thing that they have in this profession. And I think those guys have understood that and have really been, uh, I would say, taking a step uh, in every facet of the game, you know, whether it's on the field, in the classroom, or off the field. So. And with Jalen at, at a lower weight, is your vision for him to play him strictly as an outside linebacker or still versatile, also putting his hand in the ground sometimes? Yeah, I, like our guys, we're, we're going to ask him to do multiple things. I, I think, you know, I think, um, you know, and I've always kind of looked at it this way. If you can only do one thing, you better be able to do that very well. And uh, so, you know, the more things that our guys can do, and obviously we want to put them in a, a position to succeed. So we're not going to try to put, you know, like we don't want Jalen to go out there and cover a team's number one receiver. That's not what we're trying to do. But we do feel like, you know, he has some ability to rush. He has the ability to play the run. Uh, he has some ability and coverage. And we're going to try to use all that. And then obviously, you know, things that we feel like he does a little bit better than others, we'll push that a little bit more. This is the Big O Show!